Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. Today's episode, we are going to be covering DAX while loops. Now, before we get started, let's make the one thing perfectly clear. There is no looping in DAX, not, not real looping, okay? There are no while loops, there are no for loops, and there is most definitely no recursion, right? Just as nature abhors a vacuum, DAX abhors recursion. So, but with a little bit of creative thinking, creativity, we can emulate a while loop or the purpose of a while loop in DAX. Now, what do I mean by emulate the purpose of a, of a while loop, right? So let's, let's just quickly review while loops and the purpose of them. Okay, so in a while loop, you specify a condition while X is greater than five, go do some calculations. And then you're counting, maybe counting down, you know, X by, you know, X by one or something like that. But the purpose of the while loop is to kick out of the while loop when a certain condition is met. And then what you really want to do is you're trying to preserve the state or the value of some calculation uh, when you kick out of the while loop, right? So you have while X is, is, is greater than five or something, and you're doing some calculations. And when X is lower, goes less than five, you kick out and then you kind of preserve the state of any calculations that have been going on, right? So if we, we think of a while loop in that manner, then we can actually emulate that same behavior within DAX, although granted, not nearly as efficiently. All right, so to be a little more specific about what I mean by this, and I'm gonna go th kind of through the academic DAX if calculation, if you will, or formula, and then I'm gonna get into, I swear to God, I'm gonna get into a real world, real life example. In fact, just something that I just did on the community forums just uh, yesterday and today. So let's get into it. So if we scroll down to the other category, we have the while loop in DAX. And if I just go ahead and generate the DAX for this. So what you're seeing here is that I have an, a counter I equals 10. And I'm generating a table from one to I, which is one to 10. And then I am adding a column into it, which are I, where I perform some calculation. In this case, I'm just taking the value from the generate series and subtracting one. And at the end of this, I'm just counting the rows. So I'm just, how many times have I iterated through it, right? Now this is, this is the useless academic DAX while loop, okay? But it exhibits a couple very important points in, a, in, in just a few lines, right? And the, the number one thing is that we are using a table for our iterations, okay? So every row in the table, think of every row in the table as a, as a loop through a while loop, okay? You really gotta twist your brain on this one, guys. So, and then and now the add columns is where we're performing a calculation within the loop, okay? And at the end, then we can specify some condition where we wanna analyze this while loop to find the condition that we want. Okay, so it, again, this is an emulation of a while loop, right? So the downside to all this, right, is that we probably have to perform more calculations than necessary. While loops are very efficient because they, they kick out of the loop whenever a condition is met. In this case, we have to run through all of the iterations, the rows in the table, doing our calculation, and then we and then we go and analyze that to find out where our loop kicked out, if you will. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of the the academic while loop, if you will. We're using it. We're using the rows and table as our iteration loops. We're doing a calculation within that using add columns, and then at the end we analyze that to figure out the condition where our where we met our condition, what row we met our condition on, and then that row preserves the state um, of the values that we want at the time that our condition was met. So again, got to twist your brain to think DAX on this one. All right, so that is the academic version of a while loop in DAX. So let's let's put this to a practical example. And this is very practical, as this literally just came up in the forums yesterday and today. So what we have here is we have a back orders table and a purchase orders table. Okay, the purchase order table, uh, the, let's tackle the back orders table first. Back orders table. 
back orders table has a list of back orders. So we have sales order number, we have the item code, we have the ordered quantity, and we have the back ordered quantity. Okay, so you know, basically you've got stuff sitting in your warehouse. You've only been fulfill, you've only been able to fulfill a certain amount of the orders, right? And this is where like the while loop really shines, right? I mean, the while loop really shines in supply chain kind of problems, um, is what I found. And I'll get a little bit more into that. But we have a sales order number, item code, um, we have a back order quantity. And we're what we're don't trying to do is we're like, when are we gonna be able to fulfill these back orders? Okay. So what we've done is we have a purchase order table and we have a uh, shipment item code and we have this is the ETA is when this shipment is going to come into our warehouse, right? So we've ordered product in order to fulfill the purchases that we're trying to fulfill. And so we've ordered that and then this is when this is the this is the date on when those items are going to be delivered to our warehouse where we can start the delivery process back to our customers, okay? And this is the quantity that's been, that's gonna show up in our warehouse, okay? So the idea behind this is that we wanna analyze this and say, as these quantities come in on these dates, when is the, in the, the soonest that we can fulfill these back orders, okay? Very, very basic kind of back order, you know, supply chain kind of problem, right? So, what we do here, so I'm going to take a look at, and so let's, let's assume FIFO, right? So it's according to these dates and these item codes, and we'll filter these item codes down to just a specific item code, 1507. And we're going to take a look at this FIFO calculation. And this is a column calculation. You can do it as a measure either way. Um, but we're gonna, this first parameter here says days to fulfill. So once it arrives in our warehouse, we're going to say it's going to take us 10 days to package that item up, those items up and get them shipped out and, you know, their shipping time and that. So it's going to be delivered approximately 10 days after it shows up in our warehouse. All right, that's all this is. Uh, we're grabbing our item code. So our item code for our current line here. Uh, we're grabbing the date. Again, we're using FIFO, first in, first out. Um, now we have to figure out our quantity to fulfill. Now... Again, this is where you got to twist your brain a little bit in terms of DAX. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a table of all of our purchase orders that have come in, and we're going to kind of like make a running total of them. Okay. So th what this is designed to do is to make a running total of our back orders, the back order quantities that we have. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, take grab a sum X where the item code equals the current item code, and the date is less than the date. Again, FIFO. And then sum up our back order quantity. So we've got a, a a sum of all of our back orders that we the numbers that we're trying to fulfill. What we're going to do next here is we're going to grab a table. And and I'm kind of going through this because it, with DAX and a while loop, it's just as important to set up your table correctly and with the correct correct parameters as is the the looping, if you will. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a table. And we're just going to grab out of our open purchase orders all the item codes you know that are coming into the warehouse that we're they're going to use to fulfill these back orders all right now where the while loop comes in this is our add columns right so the first thing we're going to do here is now again we're working in aggregate sums okay so the first thing we need to do is add a column to our table where we total up all of the previous purchase order quantities, okay? Because to, in order to do this, we have to work in the in, in the aggregate, um, in the running total, if you will. We can't just analyze line by line um, because that won't work within kind of the DAX emulation of the while loop, all right? So what we're doing here, all we're doing here is we're adding a column where we sum all, where we sum up all of the purchase orders that have, that are basically for each row this is why we're using earlier here. Um, we're each row. So for where the first purchase order coming in, let's go back. Maybe this will make it a little clearer. I'll go over here. I will filter to item code 1507. Okay, so on yeah, 1507. Why does this not look right at all? 
Oh yeah, here we go. So on February 1st, on February 1st, 2022, we have 6,125 items coming in. On February, on April 5th, 2022, we have 12,500 items coming in. Now, what this sum X does, what we want in our line, if you will, is that for that April 5th number, we want that 12,500 or whatever added to our 6,125. Okay, so that's what this is doing. Um, so, we're, so for that line, for the April 5th line, it's it's not only 12,500, but it's actually 12,500 plus 6,125. Just like in our back orders table on and sort this by date. On 10-29-2021, what we're trying to fulfill is not 125. We're trying to fulfill 1,250 plus 125. All right. OK. So back to our calculation. That's all this add column doing is doing that. Now we have our loop. So we've got our quantity fulfill, which is whatever our row is, plus all of the quantities for dates less than the current row, less than or equal to. So our loop counter is that total quantity column minus the quantity fulfill, okay? So that provides us the calculation that we're doing um, within the loop, if you will. Now, our target date then is going to be the minimum. So this is our condition, right? Where does that loop counter drop below zero? We want the row right before that loop counter drops below zero because that's when we have enough product coming into the warehouse to fulfill the back order for where we are currently for this order. So loop counter greater than or equal to greater than or equal to zero, and we return the date, if you will, um, where that is the the minimum where that is true, because the very next time where it goes through the loop and it's it's going to drop below zero, we don't want that value. And we don't want the values that are before that, right? Uh, we want the very last value where that loop counter drops is, is greater than or equal to zero, right? So that is, so this li next line fulfillment date, it just takes care of blanks where essentially we don't have enough orders coming in to fulfill the back orders, right? And then all we have to do is return our fulfillment date. And so if you notice here, and I've got a couple of different calculations, right? So this is FIFO. LIFO basically just changes this greater, this less than sign to greater than. And you can see here, this is fulfilling that 6,125 is able to fulfill all of these orders until we get to this big 3,000 order number. And then it has to go to April 5th, which 10 days after April 5th is April 15th. And then that 12,500 order is able to fulfill the rest of the orders. Now LIFO, which is last in first out, right? We're going to fulfill the last first. And so the first 6,125 fulfills these orders. Then we hit this 3,000 order and we have to wait until April. And then I also have a couple, a little bit more complicated. I'm not going to get into them really, but like optimize most orders. So what this one does is this one attempts to fulfill the most orders by sorting this, not instead of, not by date, but by the smallest orders first. So the theory being, right? If we take all of our smallest orders and try to fit them within that first purchase order that comes in, that'll get us the most orders fulfilled, back orders fulfilled, even regardless of whether or not the, of the date, right? And then the other, this last one here is very similar to this one, only it is trying to fulfill the most amount first. So not just the most orders first, but hey, I want to sort by how many. I'm going to fulfill. So I'm going to I'm going to choose this one first, 3,000, 2,500. So those two get fulfilled by that 6,125, right? And then after that, they they've kind of burned all burned it all up. So because that's what 5,500. So it's the next one is uh, you know, doesn't get fulfilled until later. Let's put it that way. So because the next biggest one is 1,500, that can't be fulfilled. So and then there's 
multiple different schemes, right, for fulfilling or for order fulfillment. Um, but that, in a nutshell, is a practical example of using a while loop. Okay, and you'll find this within Mushkukum. Uh, so if you look at Mushkukum, actually the there's a few different quick measures that actually use Mushkukum. I think one is in the text area, trim mean. Where's trim mean? I can't find. I really need to add a search to this thing. Why isn't trim mean under? Oh, it's probably under Excel. That's probably why. There we go. So trim mean actually uses a what I call a double concurrent while loop. OK, so it's trying to trim a certain amount off the beginning and the end. So it actually uses uh, two calculations within the while loop, if you will, in order to do that. The other one is um, day, days of supply. And I have no idea where days of supply is. It's somewhere in here. I'm looking for it. Maybe it's under other. It's not under other. I don't see it. I don't see it under there. Filters. Date intelligence. Day, days and year. Nope. Maybe I never added days of supply to this thing. I, I thought I had at some point. But apparently not. Well, I'll have to add days of supply then, um, because that would be a good one, because that's another area. If you look in the quick measure gallery, days of supply is another good example of using a while loop within DAX. Yeah, I don't see it. So that's my fail on that one. Now, OK, one last thing on this, guys. Um, so I've actually created this delivery days FIFO. OK, so if you look at the raw code for this, I've that measure that I created for FIFO, I've got a I've got a uh, a DAX custom measure, quick measure created for it, where I've replaced all of the different items. And if you know, if I wanted to create the LIFO, and so if I create the custom version of this, do I have this in the FIFO measure? Nope, I don't have it. So let's uh, I don't want to create custom. I want the DAX version of it. Go ahead and create. Everything's set. Need to set my table to back orders. It was created successfully in back orders. So then if I delivery days FIFO, here we go. Here's all the code. If I go back to here and I add my delivery days FIFO, measure, quick measure that I created, you can see delivery days FIFO, it returns the same thing as my FIFO measure, right? And if I jump back to this, if I want to create the LIFO version, I can say, well, I don't want to, nope, I don't want to edit it when it's in DAX mode, only edit it when it's in raw mode, people. Delivery days LIFO, and then I got to change my less than sign to a greater than sign. And it's going to create a custom. Delivery days LIFO, create custom. New measure definition created. There's my delivery days LIFO. I generate the DAX for that. Hit create. And I didn't set my table. I'll do that. But you notice it didn't crash. Yay, Greg. Good try catch blocks there. I add that in there. I really haven't tested this. So yes, I get the same answers as my optimum as my LIFO measure. So right here, right here, there you go. Actually worked. I didn't even test that one, guys. So no practice at all. Uh, all right, that's it. That's it on the while loop. While loops, very useful for solving super complicated kinds of problems, and they're especially useful in supply chain kinds of problems. So that's why I love them. So that's it for, to for today. Like and subscribe. Hope everybody's having a good year. And uh, hope nobody gets uh, too hammered by the blizzard that's coming. See you guys later.